So when I was growing up, if someone would have told me we're going to be talking about photoelectric in Compton, I would have thought we are talking about Serena Williams, Venus Williams, because they were photoelectric on the court and they came straight out of Compton. Hey guys, I'm Brian Nett from HowardAlgeWorks.com. We have bite-sized information that's of interest for those in the radiology field. If that sounds good to you, click subscribe below and then click on the little bell icon so you can get notified when we release new content. But we're not talking about the Williams sisters today or their dad, Richard. We're actually gonna be talking about photoelectric and Compton interactions. So we're gonna go through that. We're gonna go through pictorially. And if we remember, here you have the nucleus and that nucleus has an atomic number Z, or how many protons are in that nucleus. And then here we have an electron cloud. And in general, the electron cloud is much larger than the nucleus. So then the nucleus where the protons and neutrons reside takes up a very small fraction of the matter in general. So you have your X-ray photons coming in. And in this case, those X-ray photons are going to be interacting with an inner shell electron. So an electron which is close to the nucleus. And then if you remember from chemistry, we, we have these different shells where the electrons reside. And the shells that are closer have lower energy. And the shells that are a little bit further away, they have a little bit higher energy. Or rather, they have higher energy. They're not necessarily physically further away. But those shells have higher energy. And when an electron is removed from an inner shell, there's a vacancy. And then an outer shell electron will want to reach a more stable or lower energy configuration. So it'll move from an outer shell to an inner shell. And in order to conserve energy, it's going to emit, in this case, a photon. So we'll go through and we'll watch that in this little cartoon. So our x-ray comes in, it knocks out the electron. So we have an electron knocked out. And then this electron moves down. And then a characteristic secondary x-ray is emitted. But what's important to remember is that right here, we have an x-ray and an electron. But those are both going to deposit their energy fairly locally. So we can think about it to first order as the x-ray comes in, it interacts with the matter, and then it deposits its energy locally. So this is nice from the perspective of if we want to generate contrast in an image, it's nice that we can have some energy deposited locally and then we can basically make a map of that. We'll talk about that um, in additional lectures. But one thing to keep in mind here is that this was an inner shell electron that was having this interaction. And that's very much um, driven by what's in the nucleus, namely what's the atomic number, how many protons are in the nucleus. So the likelihood of this interaction goes like Z cubed, or how many protons are in the nucleus cubed. So things that have more protons are going to have higher contribution of photoelectric effect when they're interacting. So we'll keep that in mind. And then the other thing is Compton scattering. So Compton scattering is the second um, dominant effect in X-ray imaging. So in this case, again, we have the nucleus and then we have an electron cloud. In this case, it's the photon coming in and the photons interacting with an outer shell electron. And because it's so far from the nucleus, the likelihood of the interaction is independent of Z. So it's not really dependent on what's in the nucleus. Photon comes in, it knocks the electron out, and then the photon goes out in the opposite direction in order to conserve momentum. So what's important to remember here is that unlike in the photoelectric effect, the energy is not all deposited locally. So this scattered photon may still have a significant fraction of the energy of the incoming photon. And that can still travel through the patient and potentially could have a secondary scatter effect or potentially could uh, get measured on the detector. So we've covered the two major interactions photoelectric in Compton. And if we look at the relative contribution of those two, we can see a plot like this, where this is the relative contribution. So th these right here are saying at low energies, it's all the interactions are really dominated by photoelectric. Photoelectric is in green here, and Compton is in red. And then at high energies, everything is dominated by Compton. And that's true for these different types of material. The body can well be approximated as a bag of water for the soft tissue's sake. And then the bone in the body here shows a similar behavior, but the point at which they cross over is a little bit higher. So photoelectric is dominant for more of the time in bone than in water. So up to 26 keV, photoelectric is dominant in water and it's up to 45 keV that photoelectric is dominant in bone. Why is that? We just talked about the fact that 
The photoelectric effect is strongly dependent on the Z, and bone has a much higher Z. For instance, the calcium in the bone has a much higher Z, many more protons than in water. So that's the fundamental uh, relationship that we want to try and remember, is at low energy, photoelectric is dominant, and at high energy, Compton's dominant. So just to, again to summarize, really take these points home. Photoelectric dominates interactions at low energies. Compton will dominate interactions at high energies. And then the likelihood of these interactions for photoelectric, it's dependent on Z cubed. And for Compton, it's dependent on Z. And what, what does that tell us? It tells us that X-rays and X-ray imaging, we're going to have really good contrast for things that are higher Z, like bone. So bone imaging on standard x-rays comes out really nice with really fine contrast. So thanks for sticking around, guys, and we'll see you in the next one. It's a summary on x-ray interactions with matter.